Um, each cohort is going to have one or more parts of the Freefall Concept Builder for Physics Classroom to do. And again, this is going to be your tutorial. Um, cohort A is only initially going to be doing the speedometer part. You will be doing the other parts at some point. Um, but right now it's only the speedometer part. Um, by Friday, um, March 5th, 11.59 p.m., cohort B, I need to do all three parts because that's two virtual days worth of work pretty much um, at that point as well. Um, so if you click into your account, which is up here, it should take you to the things that are assigned, which would be this Freefall Concept Builder. It's actually under um, kinematics and motion two dimensions. So I'm going to click on this. Hopefully it knows that I'm logged in. It does, so I'm going to start. And I'll do um, at least a little bit of each of these. I'll start off with speedometer, since that's one that both cohorts are doing initially. <clears throat> so I found that it's really important to read this information. So ball is projected upward with an initial speed of approximately 30 meters per second. So the diagram at right represents points at one second intervals of time. What will the ball be moving upward with 10 meters per second? So it's starting on the left, going to the right. The key thing is, is understanding if acceleration due to gravity is about 9.8 or they're going to use 10 meters per second per second, that tells us that's how much our velocity is changing. So if you're launched upward at 30 meters per second, after one second you'll be going 20 meters per second, after two seconds you'll be going 10 meters per second upward, and after three seconds you're going to be at rest. And then on the way down we'll see the same symmetry with the speeds but pointing downward. So I think C would be the correct answer to this. And that is the data way. Now I'm going to escape this because I'm going to go into a different part. So it's not going to like that, but that's okay. So this is for cohort B. You're going to start doing these. Um, <clears throat> the describing free fall. So we'll go ahead and get started with that and do a quick example. Velocity and acceleration are both vectors. They have a direction. What is the direction of the velocity and acceleration of vectors of a tennis ball that is rising upward towards its highest point above the ground? Well, the velocity would be upward. Acceleration, anytime you're a projectile or in free fall, always downward. Now, I'm not going to do the next question, but it, they change a little bit. So <clears throat> when they say velocity here, I think they mean speed because velocity has a direction. So that's something that you need to think about uh, when they're talking about that. So actually, let's go ahead and do this one, I guess. Baseball is thrown upwards, undergoes free fall motion as it rises towards its highest point. Um, what changes, if any, would be observed? Well, the speed would decrease on its way up. Now, you got to be careful because it says it rises towards its highest point. Sometimes it's going to say when it comes down. The acceleration is always constant once it's left the person's hand. Okay, so like I said, when they say velocity for this particular part, they mean speed. And that's unfortunate. I'm going to go to the third part. So these are tricky, I think. So I may do a couple of them here. Um, again, there's a lot of unique variations. So ball is equipped with a speedometer. So here they're using speedometer correctly because it doesn't tell direction. The speedometer reading three seconds after launch is shown to the right. The ball is moving upward. So that means it had to be launched at faster than 30 meters per second up. In fact, if it's after three seconds after launch, it would have been launched at 60 meters per second up because every second the ball or the object is in the air, it's moving upward, it slows down by 10 meters per second. Every second it's coming back down, it speeds up by 10 meters per second. So what approximate times would the ball be moving downward and display the following readings? So if this is after three seconds, after four seconds it would be moving up at 20, five seconds up at 10, 
6 seconds at 0, 7 seconds down at 10, 8 seconds down at 20. So I think it's going to be 7 seconds here. Next one over here, if it's down at 20 meters per second, that's one second later. So that should be 8 seconds. Okay. Now there's one of these which is kind of weird, and I was hoping I get to this one. We'll see if I get to it or not. So ball is equipped with speedometer launched straight upwards. Speedometer reading two seconds after the launch is shown to the right, the ball is moving upward. So again, two seconds before it would have been moving upward faster by 20 meters per second. So that was its launch speed is 40 meters per second up. At what approximate time should the ball be moving downward and display the following speedometer readings? Again, you have to read carefully. Some of these are going to say upward. So that's after two seconds. After three seconds, it will be moving up at 10 meters per second. After four seconds, at zero. After five seconds, it's moving downward at 10. After six seconds, it will be moving downward at 20. Now, there's some of these where it'll be zero, and there's a couple of them. They don't give enough information, and you're a little unclear as to whether something would be there could be two different times because they don't specify whether something's moving upward or downward. If that's true, one of the times will say, pick again here. So basically that means of the two possibilities, possible answers, they're not letting you choose one of them. So when you see that um, that says, hey, choose again, you need to be thinking about the fact that maybe you were thinking about it moving upward, but in fact it's moving downward or vice versa. So that is that. And hopefully you do well.